Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans, chapter 6, beginning at the third verse. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, beginning at the first verse. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold fast his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's kind of strange. We're reading you this story, and we're here by ourselves. And I I wanted you to... uh, to get a sense of how strange it is. So I'm going to do something that hasn't been done yet. I know I'm freaking you out by getting this close to you, but I'm going to show you this. This is St. Mark's Church, and it's completely empty. Typically on this day, this Sunday, it's full. Our average Sunday attendance on on Easter is around 1,000 some odd people come in Uh, The church holds around 350 comfortably, and for those of you who have been here before know uh, that it gets kind of crowded. We have people all the way up in the balcony. We have people sitting in Margaret's parlor and in the chapel. We have people out uh, out on the front porch. Our tradition is to play a, a hymn called Welcome Happy Morning. And then we, uh, we have the children come in, and there's always a gazillion children, and they all bring in flowers. We bring out this cross, and it's really uncomfortable, and we're all trying to throw flowers up and get flowers, and they break. Um, the brass is uh, over there. They, they play a big, amazing song. It just is just this glorious sound. It's just this amazing day. It's something we all look forward to. 
everybody is in uh, good looking clothes. And then we go out and have an Easter egg hunt and we have a big party to celebrate. And that's not happening at all. It's, uh, it's almost exactly like the first Easter right now. The story I read to you from Matthew, from the Gospel of Matthew, talks about an earthquake and an angel. Well, there's just two people that see it and talk to that angel. Two women. This is what Easter morning is supposed to sound like. nothing. I wonder if 2020 is a restart. I wonder if we missed the point of Easter, of Easter day, of Easter night. I wonder if we missed by everybody showing up I'm glad you do, but I wonder if we needed to be reminded of that first Easter. Of the quiet. Of our Lord coming out of a tomb. Looking around and there's nobody there. Now think about this. Think about that. And then think about the centuries of Easter mornings. 2,000 some odd of them where good people like you and good people like me have wanted to remember an amazing event. And over the course of time, it just kept building, building, building. But think about Easter during hard times, during wars, during other pandemics, during divorces, during and right after people have died, during all of the times, all of the humanity, all of it over the course of how many years. And each one, each Easter takes its own theme. And this is our theme this year. Pandemic, shelter at home, priest with an iPad, empty church. And yet, we're still hopeful. We are hopeful people. We are Easter people. What we do is we live in hope. In the last 10 days, three important people to me have died. I am not a person of despair. Because of this empty garden, I am a person of hope. And I hope you can be too. As we walk and celebrate these great 50 days, as we begin to come out of our own sort of shelter at home, as we begin to kind of see each other again, as we begin to gather, as we fill this place back up with people, all people who celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, and we do it every week, and we celebrate it, and we say, Alleluia, this is the best thing. Alleluia, we are people of hope. We are people who are alive. Alleluia. As we gain that momentum again, Let's not forget this. A quiet garden, a quiet morning, a risen Lord. Happy Easter. Amen.
Please join me in your worship packet at home as we reaffirm our renunciation of evil and renew our commitment to Jesus Christ as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With God's help, we will continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. With God's help, we will persevere in resisting evil, and whenever we fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. With God's help, we will proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. With God's help, we will seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves. With God's help, we will strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never-failing care and love for this life and for the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have Vic and Dee, Lucas, hallelujah, hallelujah, as the Reverend Murray Powell used to say at his Easter homily, he is risen, he is risen, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
Alleluia! 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 St. Mark's family from the Raleigh's, we say Happy Easter and Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 